Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Matthew here, Wadi's channel. Uh, so today, guys, a uh, very excitable video for me because it's a video I've been waiting to make for the last couple of weeks. So over the last couple of weeks, I've made it, I purchased an absolute ton of items, okay? So I feel like in the next week or two, we're pretty much going to be looking at nothing but review videos, or at least right now, that's what it appears like. Today, I wanted to look at uh, one of the new sets of figures I got. Again, over two dozen figures from Funko's Savage World Collection. And uh, today, we're going to look at some of their horror figures. And you know what? For those fans who, who love wrestling and grew up in the 80s and had Remco figures, today today's market, you're going to see a lot of 1990s Hasbro-related figures, right? But you're finding just as many LJN-related figures. You're making a lot of, or seeing a lot of, wrestling uh, Remco related figures and now they're taking superheroes they're taking Mortal Kombat figures they're taking they're taking uh, horror icons and turning them into Remco these things are absolutely fantastic I had no idea I would love the Remco line as much as I have over these last couple of years and seeing a lot of these figures made in Remco style incredible so uh, we are gonna look at five figures today and I am pretty impressed by all of them. So uh, let's dig right into the net, uh, the first set of figures, which are the horror-related figures. Uh, first one is going to be A Nightmare on Elm Street. And this is Freddy Krieger. Yes. The infamous horror slasher Freddy Krieger. No. No Krueger here. It's simply Krieger. <laughs> Uh, if you actually look at his name, Krieger, <laughs> I thought that was I thought that was cute. Um, honestly, I thought maybe because these were, I thought they were bootlegs. So a couple of things that led me to believe it was bootleg. One, I mean, like what the heck is that, right? Uh, I thought it was just a really awesome bootleg Freddy Krueger figure. So. That's one thing. And then you get the card and it says Krieger on it. And I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Bootleg. Maybe they can't mark it from the actual names of the real life characters or the actual characters from the movies. Copyright infringement, what have you. But then you look at the other cards and they're all correct. So I don't know. Maybe they just didn't get permission from, you know, Wes Craven or, or any of these guys that had anything to do with any of the movies, uh, any of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies over the years. I'm not sure who does who's done the recent remake or two, but but uh, Freddy Krieger, I'm not going to get used to that. Calling him other than Krueger. <laughs> but the card back, absolutely fantastic. I love the look of these. And I'm not going to show the back of the card until the last one because, I got, for those of you who are seeing these for the first time, I want you to be a little bit <laughs> uh, curious what's doing next. So, I did go ahead and I bought a second set. Um, as I said, I bought about two dozen of the Savage World figures. And they included all five figures carded of those horror icons. So, the second set were purchased strictly to open up and display as loose individual figures. And, you know guys, this, this is what I'm talking about. This is why it is so important... To have a loose collection along with your card collection. Yes, it absolutely destroys me to have to open up a carded figure. Given that fact that I'm a mint on card collector. But at the same time, if you're paying $15 or so. You know, $10, $15 for a, a loose figure. Why not just spend that $10 or $15 and buy a carded figure. And then maybe in the future you can resell that, that card and bubble. You know, there are people out there that are looking for simply the card and bubble because it's gonna they're going to pay a fraction of the cost. And, you know, they can bring their cards or their figures back to mint on cards. So, all right, so, Freddy Krueger, it's obviously that's who this is. You do have a removable claw that just snaps right onto the wrist. So, that is an absolutely fantastic accessory to have. And probably the best accessory, or maybe the second best accessory of this entire line. Uh, so he kind of gives me more of that Robin Hood type of look. 
a lot of these figures, they look like, like warriors. Like in Roman times or something, they don't really give you that actual slasher vibe when you look at these guys. And when I talked about needing to have these figures off card, why? Because you will never see the intricate details and designs of the body. The way that they burn that flesh, this is impeccable work. Now, normally when I think of Funko, I think of those little tiny boxes with the little miniature figures, right? So getting something like this in, I thought was so fantastic for, for me being a horror fan. Again, uh, just kind of warrior-esque characters. They don't, they're not really, you know, the whole vibe that you get from the actual films. Where is this top hat, right? Where is that green and, and red sweater? They kind of cut out half of it off, use it as kind of like a, like a little cloth. Not even, not even a scarf or anything. I mean, it's weird. But I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to spend a couple minutes at least kind of showing you the different angles of these figures because I think they're fantastic enough to the point where I would highly recommend anyone going out and picking them up. So that is your Freddy Krueger figure. No, I'm sorry. Freddy Krieger. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at these all in alphabetical order. So next is Friday the 13th. And you've got your Jason Voorhees figure. A couple accessories to boot. As far as body, body and design, I think that the Jason figure might possibly be my second favorite among this group. Uh, downside. They, they don't really give him a machete. They give him like this bone sword. With, you know, the sword or the, the grip of the sword. Again, it looks like it's made from bone. You know, ivory or something. I would have liked to have a much better actual machete because that's exactly what Jason Voorhees is you know, known for using. It's like his go-to weapon. Now, the freaking axe is fantastic. What sucks is it doesn't really sit situate in his hand that well. I mean, it doesn't fall out. I mean, you really got to work your way to snap it in there. So, you don't have to worry about it falling, I don't think. Yeah, so it's holding pretty tight. But it's loose. You know, it doesn't like... You can't keep it displayed the same way. And I feel the same way about both both accessories. But still, they got the right accessories. Call it a machete if you want. It's a sword, but... Axe machete, fantastic. Now, why do I covet this figure as much as a majority of the other figures? Well, just like how uh, Freddy had the burnt skin. Very articulate on the body. It looked amazing. Look at the body of Jason, right? So, he kind of gives you that feel of... You know, being underwater and beaten, being eaten by like fish and 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 whatnot. I don't know what eats, what's down there, eels, minnows. I don't know, man. Shoot, but whatever you'd find in the lakes. Again, you will not see this great detail on the back of the card. Um, while still on card, if you don't open it, so that's why it's always important. To be able to display these things uh, appropriately. Some people, they could care less about being mint on card. They want the figures to breathe. And the whole point of collecting is to be able to display the figures. I feel the same way. And that's why I buy two sets. And this one, I don't know. Who does he remind me of? He kind of looks like Aquaman meets Robin Hood type of deal. So if you actually look... Under his mask, you can sort of see the deformity on his face. And the way that the deformity bleeds into the actual hockey mask is absolute killer. And the way that the bone sh uh, shines of, you know, right up going down the spine here. I mean, that right there, that spine is amazing. Oh, they, uh,. They really went all out on this. This is really incredible work. 
All right, number three. Halloween. So, the first one, they just simply said A Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Friday the 13th, but they don't really specify which movie. But here, they actually put on here Halloween Resurrection. So, Resurrection was part eight of the original run. I don't see it. I mean, pretty much all of Michael Meyer movies are going to be him in like some jumpsuit, usually a blue jumpsuit, with mask and freaking big giant butter knife. <laughs> He's got a big butter knife. Who was that? Uh, damn, I, I'm thinking it was Freddy versus Jason. <laughs> the girl's mocking, uh, I think she's mocking Freddy, and she calls his claws butter knives. <laughs> you got this little small thing, and Jason's got this big thing. <laughs> she turns around, and, and Jason sends her flying 50 feet across <laughs> across the uh, the field, whatever, into a tree. I'm like, damn, <laughs> that's brutal. <laughs> As much as I love Michael Myers, uh, among the five figures, I think this is probably the weakest. So, they give him a couple butcher knives. I would have preferred you know, at least one butcher knife and maybe another... <laughs> another butter knife. Um, maybe like a, like a saw or axe or something. You know, something different. Another weapon. It doesn't matter what the weapon is. But... Jason's a stabber, or Michael's a stabber, so what really more can you ask for? Put a gun in his hand? No. Look is very, very simple. It kind of reminds me of Skeletor a little bit from He-Man, so that that color scheme bleeds in with a little bit of a figure that I had as a kid. Now the mask, I think this is like uh, Circus Halloween 4. Now all the all the Michael Myers masks are relatively the same, but but movie four part four comes out with a, just a shade different than you would see in the other movies. And I love the way that the hair is built on here. You you could if you sit there and you really like really aren't paying attention and just start rubbing your finger along, you could slice your finger open. It is that that rough and abrasive, and it's it's sharp and it's beautiful. The head head sculpt is probably one of the best. So I, I think that, again, is, I just love these figures, man. I, I just don't know how else to describe them. And, you know, they all got, like, these little loincloths or whatever these things are. They do come up and off. And what did I just knock over? Oh, just dropped my knife. <laughs> all right. Moving on. I've gotten really hot and heavy into this guy recently. And Hellraiser. Uh, this one is Hell on Earth, and Hell on Earth was what? Hellraiser 3? Oh, pfft. stupid. It says it right there, Hellraiser 3. <laughs> so, what was I watching recently? I think it's because I picked up a couple of NECA Toonie Terrors, and uh, Hellraiser was one of those guys. And ever since I, I got that, I'm like, you know what? I, I feel like going back and watching Hellraiser. And uh, on YouTube, a few days ago, I watched uh, An American Werewolf in Paris. I mean, no matter how many times I've seen that movie, it'll never compare to part part one. But shoot, I, I don't know why I'd never give it enough credit for being a great movie. Because, you know, it was a great movie. And uh, a couple nights ago, I watched uh, Hellraiser Part 2 on YouTube. Or... Uh, I don't know if I watched it on YouTube or Tubi. I think I watched it on YouTube. And then like yesterday, I watched uh, Hellraiser Revelations 2018. I actually did see that movie in the past. Uh, I didn't remember. I thought it was a new movie I never saw before, but no, I've seen it. Uh, there was a movie I was talking about in 2017. I was watching a Hellraiser movie. I thought it was a, a recent release, 2016, 2017. It turns out that movie came out in 2011. And... Uh, Oh, God, what's the guy's name? The, the, the actor, Bradley, Bradley, uh, I can't remember his freaking name. It drives me nuts. But uh, that was the first movie that I'd never seen him as Pinhead. 
Uh, he, they do give him a little puzzle box, which is fantastic. But the issue with this is I don't like accessories that don't really serve a purpose. Well, what do I mean? There is absolutely no way whatsoever for this accessory to situate inside. Well, this doesn't work either. To situate inside his hands, right? So if, if you have an accessory like a hat, okay, if it doesn't fit in your hand, you wear it, right? If you have some kind of clothing or whatnot, um, this... So this right here ain't, ain't even working properly anymore. Uh, what is this? I don't know, some kind of hook. Some hook, it's got little spikes on it. Same thing with the knife. This is actually, if you look at it, the way that this knife is designed, it doesn't really look like a steak knife. It looks like one of those uh, those electric uh, electric razors that you'd use to carve turkeys. Carving knife. Now the hook was situated in his hand at one point, and now it's not staying. Yeah, so not even that's working anymore. You gotta try and find a way to kind of pinch the hands in. But you got this really nice accessory, but... It's basically something you're gonna you're gonna show at at his feet, with the uh, Neca Tooney Terrors. They have the box obviously as his accessory, but his hands are kind of like this, right? So the accessory slides right underneath it. You can lower the hands and keep it in place. So it, it works beautifully. I remember my wife uh, when I was watching uh, the last movie yesterday. She she woke up and came downstairs. She looked at him like those don't even look like nails. <laughs> I'm like. Well, he's called Pinhead for a reason. Pin. Not Nailhead. I didn't really say it like that, but... I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It's not the Bradley guy from the original eight movies. This is either the guy that took over in uh, the ninth or, or tenth movie. But the whole little bloody chest design... This outfit, I mean, it is like one of those things that are synonymous with certain characters, right? This outfit is synonymous with Pinhead. You will know this look from anywhere, even without the head. Uh, anything else? I'm thinking among the figures, Michael Myers might be the worst. This might be the second worst. And think about it. If this is second worst, that just shows you how amazing all the other figures are. Because this is really solid. Alright. Last figure. Of all of the different horror slasher movies, this franchise is not exactly one of my most favorite. I don't have anything against the franchise or its killer. I've seen plenty of these movies, but I'm pretty sure there are plenty of other movies I haven't seen because they keep remaking these movies over and over again. But it is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And Leatherface, I have to admit, is absolutely killer. So, this is Leatherface complete. And I say complete because when you look at the bottom of the uh, the mallet there, same thing with, with the chainsaw, right? It's got this little hole in the bottom because when you look at his hand... All it is is a little nub, and you just attach it right there. But luckily, I was just, I was able to squeeze the mallet, the hammer, into, into his hand, so I could still display both of them together. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I mean, you're talking one of the biggest horror franchises of all time. And now we get to look at all figures together. Plus, uh, this was, you know, a real-life story and whatnot. And uh, I think some of those stories that... If they're based on true events... Either makes people... They're either torn. They're either, it makes most people either not want to watch it... Or it makes the other half, half of people enjoy it more... Because they know it could happen. And it's like being on a, being on a roller coaster, right? Um, you know that you, there's there's the potential for, for danger, but 
it gets your heart racing and it's exhilarating and whatnot to, to watch a movie like that. But knowing that somebody died in real life and that this ain't really make believe. Now this ain't uh, this isn't no crow, you know, uh, where Brandon Lee is being shot dead type of deal. I mean the actors themselves are fine, but just I guess the characters that they're molded after. But Leatherface, I think, is easily the best figure uh, from this bundle. One, his bulkiness and overall look is the most closely resembling his iconic character that he's based on, which is amazing. Okay, uh, He has easily the best accessories. And the fact that they, they're pretty much like snapped right into place. They're nice and tight. You don't have to worry about these things falling out. Amazing. This is a perfect figure. Perfect horror figure. And I think I made up my mind. Um, I'm going to take all my horror stuff. At least the things I have in the storage room. And these new figures here. I'm going to put them upstairs in one of my spare bedrooms. Uh, we had another shelf built. So I am... It's all the books and college textbooks and stuff I had up there. I moved into the office on the new built-in shelf. So I have that, that shelf open for other things in my case displays and collectibles all right so uh that is the five horror figures from the funko savage world in the next video i plan on taking a look at the uh dc universe now i don't think no to the best my I, i've never made any videos about superheroes i think the closest i've ever done is maybe talk about power rangers but I've never actually talked about any other superheroes or done reviews or anything like that. Because they're part of the same Savage World release type of deal, uh, I am going to look at both the superheroes and the villains from the Savage World collection. And then I'm going to follow that up with uh, about half a dozen or so uh, figures from Mortal Kombat. And those are going to be really great. So even though that's not horror per se... And it's not superheroes. It's still one of the most popular video games of all time. And I think no matter your age, whether you're from the 70s, 80s, 90s, or today's modern child, they keep coming out with more and more Mortal Kombat games. So everyone's been exposed to Mortal Kombat, either through video games or through the actual TV shows or movies. And yes, they even came out with a great series uh, as a YouTube original series. Uh, don't know how long that ran. Maybe a season or two, but Mortal Kombat, I mean, they're action figures, especially if you get like McFarlane toys. That crap is crazy expensive. <laughs> like, amazingly expensive. So, uh, getting these guys in for the prices I did was, was super special. Um, so guys, uh, that is going to take care of this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. And uh, please let me know if you have any uh, any figures that are out there that you think I might enjoy. Because, you know what, I'm still looking for new items to talk about every now and then. So, I'll, if you uh, make the referral, I will definitely check it out. Alright guys, that's it for now. Thank you and goodbye.